Hey guys, it's Gabe with Motivex Tools. Just gonna do a walkthrough for you today on the 0506 Toyota Sienna. I say 0506 because this is a mid model year built in June? May. May. <laughs> All right, I say it's a mid model year due to the fact that this is built in May of 05. So it's right on that cutoff before they went over to the canister filters. So I'm gonna walk you through a couple of the items that you're gonna require for the oil change here premium grade oil keep your vehicle running strong for as long as you own it. Premium filter wouldn't hurt to run this premium oil with. Filter wrench for this uh, oil filter. This uses a spin-on oil filter, so we're gonna utilize one of our uh, new band wrenches that we've just released. Also, you're gonna require to remove the drain plug, um, ratchet, and a 14 millimeter socket. You can also use a 14 millimeter wrench if you prefer. I prefer using the socket myself. Another good thing to have around is gonna be a pick in order to get the uh, old drain plug washer off of that drain plug. And last but not least, the Motivex Tools Advanced Lock and Funnel. Because who likes spilling oil all over the place, right? Like always, Remember to place your oil filter cap on the hood latch to prevent you from closing the hood prior to placing oil. Another thing that I'm going to add in is it's always a good idea to also raise up your oil dipstick as it will allow air to enter and drain oil faster. Especially on Nissan vehicles, Nissan vehicles are the worst. So we're going to go ahead and be installing the new oil pan drain plug and washer. Oil is all drained out. Just go ahead and snug that up by hand. There is a torque for these drain plug washers. It's typically going to be 28 to 30 pounds more or less depending on the vehicle. But it's a safe bet to just do it hand tight. Just don't overdo it. I usually go till it stops and give it a couple uh, firm little taps never had a drain plug come out on me yet so in this particular vehicle the oil filter is going to be located directly in the front of the engine right under the exhaust manifold so ideally you're going to let the engine cool down for about half an hour to prevent yourself from burning your arm the filter is easier to get from the bottom ideally but most people are going to be getting this filter from the top of the vehicle so i'm going to go ahead and access this filter from the top uh, but the camera is going to go ahead and get you a shot from the bottom so you can see what we got going on here So one thing you want to do when you pull off your spin-on filter is you want to wipe down the base of the filter where the gasket mounts and then you want to grab the stud and just kind of make sure it's it's tight on there. A lot of times if the filter is very tight when you go to loosen it you may loosen the stud and inadvertently leave your filter loose. You'd be surprised how many filters I've seen come in that you pull off the filter and the stud comes off with it. All right, and don't forget when installing your new filter, very important to use new oil. Don't use used oil, rub your two filters together, anything like that. You don't want to get some debris in there. It makes your gasket not seal properly. Put some new oil on that seal prior to installation and you'll be set to go. So 
So even if you've uh, looked up the spec online for your oil capacity, it's always a good idea to not add the full capacity right off the bat. I usually put one quart under and check the oil level prior to starting the engine. Just to give me an idea where I'm at so I don't uh, overfill. It's always easier to add oil than it is to take some out. All right, so as soon as you're comfortable with the oil level, it's a good idea to start the car. Uh, when you start it, just start it uh, for 15, 20 seconds at the most. Just enough to cycle oil through the engine, fill up the oil filter and make sure your oil is dropped down to the proper level. All right, so we've given it about 30 seconds, 45 seconds to drip down. We're gonna go ahead and just double check the oil level. Pull out the dipstick, wipe it down with a clean cloth. Sunge it back into the dipstick tube and check the oil level. Looks like we're good. So the last step of the service is gonna be to come inside and reset your maintenance light. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn your key forward and you're gonna make sure that your Odometer is set to odometer and not trip A or trip B. So we'll go ahead and find odometer here. So once it's on odometer, we're going to turn the key back off. Now we'll go ahead and push and hold this trip reset button here. While still holding it, turn the key to the on position. You're going to hold it there for about seven seconds. And you'll see the maintenance light flash and disappear. We can go ahead now and start the engine. Your light's now been reset. All right, so hopefully that uh, walkthrough helped a lot of you guys out. As I know a lot of people um, are, feel the task of changing the oil to be daunting, uh, but it honestly isn't that hard. Uh, it saves you a lot of money and it lets you uh, keep an eye on what's going on under your vehicle, which a lot of times in itself can save you a lot of money catching something before um, it gets to be an expensive repair. So oil change intervals are going to vary by manufacturer. Typically it's going to be uh, three and a half thousand miles to five thousand miles. Uh, most manufacturers will recommend a seven thousand mile interval with every 3,500 miles doing the oil and every seven thousand miles doing oil and filter. Um, so it's usually a good idea to check your owner's manual. Uh, but a good 5,000 mile interview is a, is a good rule of thumb.